Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. it's with us this morning. Right. Oh, good morning, all. Uh, I'm I'm going to uh, mute you all. We've 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 hit our time, so we're going to get a start. Um, so you should all be silent now. Um, a few things, a uh, bit of housekeeping. Um, if any of you haven't been since the last time Zoom, Zoom have changed the rules now. I can't uh, unmute you all. I can't unmute you at all. Uh, you're, it's down to you to unmute yourself. So if you want to say anything or you want to be, be heard or whatever, please press your microphone and bring yourself back into the meeting. Um, we are recording. I hope you don't mind. But as I say every time, that's for our members uh, who are at home not online and who get the DVD every week. So they should look forward to hearing all that we've got to say this morning, I'm sure. Uh, requisites. I hope you've had the, the memo. You need a paper and pen, please. Um, other than that, uh, a cuppa is advisable because um, I, I have to say, uh, the, the first thing really is that I'm, I, I am a little bit kind of lost with the world at the moment. <laughs> Uh, we had our writing group, and the, the, I, wrote, I wrote a song called Out of Touch, because that's how I feel at the moment. So I was, I was a little bit lost and bewildered this week, looking up to Easy Church and thinking, what on earth? I mentioned it to Lorna, and she said, have you ever thought about a labyrinth? And whilst I've been, I think, once maybe, or seen uh, a labyrinth, well, I've never really taken it on in that sense. And so we are going on a journey this morning, and... Uh, a warning up front, it's going to be contemplative, so therefore uh, the idea that you sat in your armchairs is very good, because the, the whole point here is to relax uh, and come along on this journey, but entirely at your own pace. We're all in our own space, which is very good, uh, so you don't have to worry about getting in anyone's way as we go on the journey. Um, so we're, we're going to tackle it. Uh, we're going to do a, a labyrinthian journey for the next hour or so, but well, probably not that long, to be fair. Um, there's, there's some controversy, as I discovered this week, about the principle of labyrinths in Christianity. They, they have pagan roots, and I think that's what scares one or two people. Um, but I did discover that the Methodist Church completely approves of it, uh, as a way of worship and a way of journeying and a, and a way of considering our relationship with God uh, to the extent that uh, I think 2007 there were some resources produced by the Methodist Church called Lost in Wonder which is really very good and Michaela Youngson who was the president by the last year or the year before forgive me Michaela um, was involved in it and so it, it very much is something that is absolutely sanctioned by the Methodist Church. Michaela Youngson who was also Wayne Grucox, youth club leader. Oh, my word, yeah. <laughs> hey, she must be old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wayne's not here to get the benefit of that. Never mind. Um, so, the, the, the labyrinth is a, is, a, is a path. I'm going to be sharing the screen a little bit this morning. Um, and here's the first bit of it. Hopefully, you will see this in a second. The, the, this is a very, very, very simple labyrinth so it's a maze uh, it, you can see from from that uh, that there is one way in uh, on this particular labyrinth because some have more than one journey one more than one path that you can travel but on this one there's one way in to get to the center and then you retrace your steps uh, to come back out of of the other side and so i want you to picture and and see this this labyrinth as we go through this journey um this morning. So <clears throat> there's a quote uh, in the Methodist Church resources. It says, you are on the path exactly where you're meant to be right now. And from here, you can only go forward, shaping your life story into a magnificent tale of healing, of courage, of beauty, of dignity, and of love. And that's from someone called Caroline Adams. Another quote says, the labyrinth is, the, is a model of a path used through the ages as a tool for pilgrimage, meditation, or prayer. So this ancient symbol creates a sacred space and leads us out of our ego to that which is within. So today's journey is in five stages through the course of that very simple labyrinth that you saw. Uh, we're going to consider the entrance to the labyrinth. 
we're going to consider our way to the center uh, we're going to consider our time at the center when we will meet with god if you like uh, we'll consider our way out away from the center and we will consider leaving the labyrinth at the end so there are five stages that we're going to walk through so it will involve time when you just need to sit back and think um, and ponder and as i say we can do that in our own space which i think is something very good and very powerful uh, about the way in which we're going to do it this morning um, before we start i would like to ask you at any time between now and stage four of the journey to send me some prayer thoughts and requests so it's for what will be our intercession section as we're thinking about the rest of the world and thinking looking outward and we're going to have a pray uh, between us and i'd like your requests as to things that we ought to think about and pray for and consider and and really think why think widely uh, yes think globally think pandemic think non-pandemic Think about church at the moment in the state that it's in. Think politics or don't. Think friends and family. Um, think about your enemies and adversaries. And perhaps most of all, on this journey this morning, think about yourself. So I would like you, please, at any time in the next, what, what's going to be 20 minutes or so, before we get to section four, to send me those prayer, prayer requests. And there's a few ways in which you can do it. You can send it on the Zoom chat. So if you press the chat button at the bottom of your screen, you'll get a chance to send comments and you can send them to everyone or you can click the button to send it just to me. Uh, you can text them to me if you've got my mobile number, you can email them to me and you should all have the email um, from when uh, I sent you the Zoom link. Send them by carrier pigeon. We really don't mind any option you want. Smoke signals would be interesting if you're in your garden. Um, or failing all of that technology, when we get to section four, uh, I'll ask you if you've anything that you'd like to pray for. So if you can't get to any of the technology, don't worry, uh, but you won't miss out on the chance of offering some thoughts. So when we pray later, mm -hmm. we'd like to just hear what it is we, we would all like to pray for. So. Um, send them now, uh, send them whenever, make notes as you go through, as anything occurs to you, things that you would like uh, to consider during the prayer section, just uh, share them with me if you would at some stage. So, um, here we are. Um, we're, we're going in, but well, kind of going in, because we find ourselves at the entrance to the labyrinth. So here we are at the door. And this is what I'd like you to think about. First things first, kick your shoes off and make yourself relaxed. The, the carpeting inside this labyrinth is beautiful. It's a very thick pile and walking with your bare feet will be just a beautiful experience. So, I mean, I have to confess, uh, well, I did have shoes on and now I haven't. I've kicked, kicked my feet, shoes off. So Lorna, sorry for the smell. Um, but kick your shoes off, make yourself feel relaxed. Um, I don't think we can be in any doubt that we all come to this labyrinthian journey this morning from wherever we've come with uh, baggage and burdens and things that we are carrying, things that are on our back, things that are weighing us down. I have to say that I've often struggled on a few occasions over the years with church services and occasions in church services that tend to say to you, bring all of your troubles give them to jesus and they will all disappear um, and there seems to be this magic wand promise about an act of worship that will suggest that literally all you need to do is hand your troubles to jesus and that will be that and i have to confess i've walked away from a few of those occasions and in the coming in the ensuing hours days or weeks realized that of course the things that were troubling me still are troubling me and they haven't magically disappeared so i am in a second going to ask you to set these burdens down but it comes with a promise that you can have them back at the end if you want them you can have them back at the end before we go um so there's no magic wand here but i am in no doubt that the Jesus that loves us all is there and ready to share 
and help us bear these burdens. And he's happy that we offer them to him. But it just comes with that little proviso that if it's scary to let them go forever right now, then you don't have to, and you can have them back at the end. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus is standing at the cloakroom of our labyrinth and he's there ready to take our stuff, our bags, our coats, our burdens, our worries, our fears, whatever they look like. And what the, 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 the other thing that I'm discovering as I go through my later life is there's always a Martin Joseph song for the worship occasions that we're having. And there is one this morning that I'm going to sing to you called, funnily enough, The Things That We Have Carried Here. I know the song, and, and when I listen to it again this week, this week, it's absolutely perfect for what we're thinking about this morning. All those things that we have brought to where we are now. And he says, someday they will disappear. Um, and also, he, he, the song talks about freedom from these things, but he says that freedom needs a volunteer to be beautiful. And that volunteer is us, ourselves. We are the volunteer that is that being asked to join in this act of freedom from our troubles and our worries. I wonder how many of us, if we look at the screen at ourselves this morning, see a beautiful person. I don't think it will be the majority. And, and I do think those of you who do see a beautiful person, I, am, I feel utterly elated and delighted that that's the case. But I suspect many of us look at ourselves and maybe whatever we do see, it isn't beautiful. But I want you to think about something. There's uh, 18 screens here. and one, two, So there's maybe 25 people here. I'd like you just for a second to scan and look at everyone else who's, on, who's in this service. Just look at everyone else's face in this service. And there's 25 of us, and I've just quickly stand, scanned, and I've seen 24 people who I think are beautiful in so many ways. And that's kind of how life works. What that means, folks, is that 24 people have just considered you as a beautiful person. So maybe we're the ones that are wrong, who knows? Um, freedom needs a volunteer to be beautiful, and that's us. So we're being invited to volunteer into that this morning. So here's the exercise I'd like you to do as I sing the song. Let the words drift around you, but I'd like you to take your paper and pen, and I'd like you to write down the things that you're gonna leave in the cloakroom you can have them back again. So feel okay to set them down and leave them in Jesus' care just for a little while. Now you can write them down, you can use words. You could draw something to indicate them. You could write them down in code. You know what it means. But I'd like you to list the things, the things that are really troubling you, the things that are weighing you down that you're gonna leave with Jesus in the cloakroom and just jot a number next to each one. And that's your cloakroom ticket. You keep that ticket with you through the course of the journey this morning and you can bring it back to Jesus at the end and take it back from him. So what are the things you're going to set down? What are the things that you have carried here? Uh, and I shall sing the song now and please go through that exercise. The beauty of it is no one's going to see your piece of paper. This is between you and Jesus, the cloakroom attendant. So you can be as honest as you need to be and no one's gonna look at your work. <clears throat> so set your things down and leave them with the guy at the cloakroom. You're coming down, you're beautiful. Let me raise you up, my love, beautiful. 
Ten thousand years of longing And your stories still untold Wisdom is the knowing when to fold The things that we have carried here Someday they will disappear Just like skin and bone Death and stone Things that we have carried here Freedom needs a volunteer To be beautiful Beautiful We seldom see A falling sky But we dig in rubble deep To find survivors if love ever kissed you, if your face ever cried, maybe then my hope is justified. The things that we have carried here, someday they will disappear like skin and bone, death and stone. Things that we have carried here Freedom needs a volunteer To be beautiful Beautiful And we Skin and bone, death and stone. Things that we have carried here, freedom needs a volunteer to be beautiful. Beautiful. You're coming down. Beautiful. Let me raise you up now, beautiful. Thank you everyone. So hopefully you have your list and feel free to add to it. So we're in and the next stage of the journey is our way to the center. <clears throat> we're on the journey, we're in the labyrinth and we're heading towards the center the place where we will encounter God. So on our way into the labyrinth, uh, I'd like us to ponder and think about the concept of love. And I know that's big. Um, it's the topic that more, more songs and more poems and more books and more creative stuff has ever been done about other than any other topic in the world. Love is a, a huge topic and one that we think about lots in Christian worship and Christian life. So I'm going to just ask maybe two or three questions and get you to think about that. And then I'm going to share a reading um, in a translation that we're probably not entirely used to hearing it in. Um, and so I'll ask the questions. And as I said, this is very contemplative. So just be alone with your thoughts as we're in the middle of this labyrinth and heading towards the center. 
so here are the thoughts to consider. The very simple one with a massive not simple answer is what is love? What, what does love mean to you? Um, I'd first of all like you to think about times in your life, and it could be right now or it could have been whenever in the past, when you have loved so what might that be? That might have been a place or a situation that you were in. It might have been um, something that you saw that was creative, such as a play or a musical or something on the TV. It, of course, can be the people, friends and family and people close to you, people that you love, that you've always loved, maybe, and that you know you're always going to love. Think about when you have loved something or when you love something right now. How does that feel inside? Capture that feeling. What does it feel like to love, to have that overwhelming sense of love and care and attachment and compassion and desire for something or somebody? Just capture those feelings. How does it feel to love? Secondly, I want you to think about times and occasions. And again, it can be right now when you have felt loved. And yes, we will have had times of trouble and heartache and pain when we felt the opposite. But I want you to think about the times when you have felt love from somebody or something, or you have felt adored, you have felt cared for, you have felt looked out for. Think of those occasions. And again, capture how it feels inside. Capture where it feels inside. Is it in your head? Is it in your heart? Is it in your bones? So just ponder, scribble if you want, it doesn't matter. Times when you have loved, how did that feel? And times when you have felt loved. How does that feel? God captures all of those feelings and senses and, 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 and what love might be like and magnifies it and loves the world and loves us in a way that we'll, we'll never be capable of. Paul, the apostle, said, I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Now I have a reputation for using too many words and talking too much. Paul could have said that in about eight words. He could have just said, nothing is ever going to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, but he had a point to make. And so he went on and on and on and on and on about the things that are not ever going to get in the way of the love that God has for all of us. There's a baseline love of God. There's an unconditional love from God that we can tap into, that we do draw strength from. God loves in the ways that we love and magnifies it so much so those are the three things to think about times when you have loved times when you have felt love and god's love as you just listen to the following words this is a very very famous passage about love and i'm sure that we will have all heard, have heard it many times before but i looked at the message translation and found the fresh way to my ears at least, to how some of these things are said in this passage, quite powerful. So think about all those three angles on love 
we're journeying to the center of the labyrinth and listen to this. 1 Corinthians 13, the way of love. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but I don't love, then I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything as plain as day. And if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump and it jumps, but I don't love, then I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've got nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm simply bankrupt without love. This is what love is like. Love never gives up. Love cares for more than for love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Doesn't have a swelled head doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be cancelled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant would. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us towards that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, and love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. We now find ourselves <clears throat> at the center of the labyrinth. And here we're going to have some time with God. Wherever you are on your faith journey, you may feel complete confidence in your relationship with God, or you may be shaky with your confidence with God for this little while. Let's give God the benefit of the doubt and sit in his presence. I'm going to share um, a video that we have watched before on occasion. Uh, it has always been very popular. Uh, it's Rob Bell's Numa video called Rhythm, which talks about what a relationship with God might be like. So as you watch it, you may not want to watch it. You may want to sit with your own thoughts and that's fine. It's about 10 minutes long. Um, just think, please, about your relationship with God and in the world in which we, love, we live. The relationship that we have with the people in and around our lives. So let's just have the next little while at the center of our labyrinth thinking about our time and relationship with God.
somebody saying that they were pulling into a parking lot and the space closest to the building opened up and they said it was a sign that God was with them and then uh, probably about two weeks ago I heard somebody talking about two people who'd been sick and the one of them had been healed and they were talking enthusiastically about how God had intervened to heal the one person and the whole time I'm thinking yeah but what about the other person I mean they didn't get healed where was God why didn't God intervene with them and then uh it was last night, just last night, I heard somebody say that they had been in a store and they'd seen something they really wanted and it was on sale and they said, this just shows how good God is. If God can help people find things on sale, then why hasn't God spent time doing things that seem more important like earthquakes or famines or sickness? When you think about God, when you hear the word God, what images come to mind? Like this old man with a long white beard, and he's behind a curtain and he's working these levers. He's, he's healing some and then he's finding parking spaces for others. See, for many people, their concept of God is built around a God who's outside of everything. A, a God who essentially is somewhere else. A God who made the world, but then stands back and like watches it from this other vantage point. A God who's there and then from time to time comes here. But the problem with this concept of God is you end up having to even prove that this God even exists. And so what happens is we start with real life, we start with existence, this, what we all agree actually exists. And then people end up arguing and debating and discussing whether there's a God somewhere else who has something to do with this. But the but the writers of the Bible seem far less interested in proving whether God exists and far more interested in talking about what God is like. Like in the book of Exodus, a man named Moses wants to know God's name and God responds, I am. And then later God reminds Moses that when Moses heard God's voice, he saw no shape or form. I mean, God is beyond anything our minds can comprehend. What's it mean to have a personal relationship with this kind of God? I mean, that's like, that's like hard, hard to get your mind around. You know, I believe that God listens and God cares and God's involved, but I find the whole relationship idea hard to comprehend. And then loving this kind of God, what does that look like? What does it mean? And, and how do you do it? When I think of God, a song it's a song that moves me it has a melody and it has a groove it, it has a certain rhythm and people have heard this song for thousands and thousands of years across continents and cultures and time periods people have heard the song and they found it captivating and they've wanted to hear more now, there have always been people who say there is no song and, and who deny the music, but the song keeps playing. And so Jesus came to show us 
how to live in tune with the song, like that he's the way and the truth and the life. This isn't a statement about one religion being better than all the other religions. I mean, the last thing Jesus came to do was start a new religion. He came to show us reality at its most raw. He came to show us how things are. I mean, Jesus is like God and taking on flesh and blood. And so in his generosity and in his compassion, that, that's what God's like. In his telling of the truth, that's, that's what God's like. In his love and forgiveness and sacrifice, that's that's what God's like. That's who God is. That's how the song, that's how the song goes. I mean, the song is playing all around us all the time. The song is playing everywhere. It's written on our hearts and everybody is playing the song. See, the question, the question isn't whether or not you're playing a song. The question is, are you in tune? Like it's written in the book of Acts. It says that God gives us life and breath and everything else. God is generous. So when I'm like selfish and stingy and I refuse to give, I'm essentially out of tune with the song. Later, in one of John's letters, he says that God is love unrestrained, unconditional love. So when you see somebody sacrifice themselves for another, for the well-being of somebody else, it's like they're playing in the right key. That's why it's so inspiring and powerful. They're in tune with the song. Now, some people know all sorts of stuff about music. They know stuff about pitch and modes and keys and instruments. And so they, they can hear things that maybe other people don't. They, they hear subtlety and nuance in, in the song that other people might miss. They appreciate things others might miss. But it's also possible to be so caught up in the technical aspects of the song that you miss the simple, pure enjoyment of the song. I mean, there are people who talk as if they know everything about being a Christian, and yet they can seem way out of tune. And then there are others who would say they don't know much at all about the Christian faith, and, and yet they can seem very in tune with the song. I mean, I've met lots of people who struggle with what it means to have a relationship with God, but they haven't lost faith and love and hope, and truth and compassion and justice and generosity. I mean, maybe you have this the sense like uh, you have no sort of relationship with God because of all these things, these ideas you have about what that means, all these things that you've been told about what it is or, or what it isn't. And, and an infinite, massive, kind of invisible God, that's, that's hard to get our minds around. But truth, love, grace, mercy, justice, compassion. The, the way that Jesus lived, I can see that. I, I can understand that. I can relate to that. I can play that song.
come to see that the song is written on your heart. And as you live in tune with the song, in tune with the creator of the universe, may you realize that you are in relationship with the living God. So what does your relationship with God look and feel like? Just repeating one sentence from the video. In one of John's letters, he says that God is love, unrestrained, unconditional love. So when you see somebody sacrifice themselves for another, for the well-being of someone else, it's like they're playing in the right key. That's why we find it so inspiring and powerful because they are in tune with the song. Okay, so we're now going to make our way away from the center and back towards the exit. Uh, this is going to be our prayer and intercession section. Uh, so huge thanks to those of you that have sent prayers through by various means. Uh, I have had one carrier pigeon as well, which is lovely. <laughs> um, so that's been, uh, that's lovely, thank you. So um, I'm going to just pull us all back together now. Um, the <clears throat> I'm getting old because the writing on this screen a little bit away from me is very small. So I'll bring it a bit closer so I can see it. What I'd like us to do for our intercession section, we're going to pray together now. Um, and I will just simply share the prayers and thoughts that everyone has offered um, during the course of the morning. Um, and we can just have our own thing, our own thoughts as well. But what I'd like us to do, look at the screen, we're covering quite some number of miles here um we we've extended all the way down to uh, north devon and then going across the, the 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 northern europe to copenhagen so we're, we're going quite a way but we're going to achieve something beautiful which is we're all going to hold hands and you can imagine what that's going to look like i'd like us to form a big circle mm -hmm. so imagine holding hands with the person next to you now for some of you that's easy because you have a person next to you but for those of you at that side of the screen, you've got to hold hands with the person to the left of you and the other one left and, yeah, you know what I mean, left and right. So we're, we're going to hold, form one big circle uh, across the miles as we pray and look, we're walking away from our encounter with God now and we're looking out into the world and let's simply pray together. Lorna, I'm gonna to have to swap hands so that I can use my mouse. Okay, so uh, let us, pray. Lord God, it is so good that we are all here today uh, across the miles and we find ourselves in this still very strange environment, but very powerful. It's lovely that we can look and see each other as we come together and pray to you and with you now. We, we're on our journey this morning as we think about our relationship with you, but help us now to look away from ourselves into the world uh, and consider the places and situations that we find important to us. So we thank you that we can be with you in prayer and let us pray together now. Lord, we pray at this time for unity. This lockdown has reminded us how weak we are when we are alone. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved 
you. We look into the world and see a lack of social responsibility in responses to staying safe during this pandemic. Too many people are saying, you can't tell me what to do, but I am my brother's keeper. Help us to look out for each other. We're troubled by the way that some white Caucasians are so distanced from truly understanding what it is like to be non-white. There's a wave going across the world. How can we not only empathize, but also truly understand and offer real acceptable support? As we hold our hands together across the miles, we pray for all struggling with mental health challenges. May we do all we can to support and love each other, continuing to pray and campaign for better support from the health services, and the breaking down of the stigma surrounding mental health. Lord, to love others, we must first learn to love ourselves, not with a selfish love, but with an eyes wide open love that truly sees others and their situation and the needs that they may have. We must learn to let go and let God with unrestricted access. Once we let God in, we let him out through our lives, through the way in which we live and interact with people around us. We pray this morning specifically for Steve, Joanne and, Stally, and Sally as they still come to terms with the loss of James. Dorothy, Jim, Steve, Joanne, Sally, all miss him so much and we all do too. We pray for each other through that pain. We offer a prayer for all those who are fearful and confused. For those who feel life is getting smaller and darker. Feeling as if they're lost in a maze. A very poignant prayer as we share our journey together this morning. So Lord, let us simply say thanks that you are with us as we are all here together. And from this circle of love across the miles, help us, help us to channel that love, the love you have for us. Help us to channel it and make the world see it as we go on our way from this journey this morning. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I think I got everyone's prayers, um, and um, I, I'm sorry if I missed you. Oh, and I'm so sorry because I also promised that I'd give everyone a chance to say a prayer and let me know what they wanted to say if they couldn't get a message through. <laughs> so please, please forgive me. We now come to section five. Um, this is the exit. Now, as we leave, if you leave anywhere, what's at the exit? It's the gift shop, isn't mm -hmm. it? So we're all going into the gift shop. Yes, yes, we can go in the gift shop before we leave. Okay, so we're all going back now to the cloakroom area and into the gift shop. Um, the cloakroom attendant is there. He's still there. He's been there throughout the journey. And what I'd like you to do is take a look back at your list of items that you left with Jesus at the start and the numbers next to them, because you can just take your ticket and you can, you can have them all back or any of them if you want. You could choose to leave some of them with him if you think that's appropriate. But now's your chance to redeem your tickets and, and get your baggage back if you need it or want it. I want you also to listen to the following verse and write some extra words on your list because there are other things available to us as we leave the labyrinth this morning. In Galatians it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace and patience 
and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And against such things there is no law. So to the right-hand side or left-hand side, however you drew it on your paper, I'd like you to write down the following nine commodities. Love. Joy. Peace. Patience. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. All these fruits are available to us. Maybe if you picture in the gift shop at the exit to the labyrinth, there's a pick and mix stall. I know pick and mix is not a good idea in a coronavirus pandemic, but hey, this one's okay. You can have these items. You can take a bag and you can grab a scoop of each one or maybe a few scoops of one extra, if you need some extra of others, the, all these things are available to you in the gift shop. So I'd like you just to spend a few moments and consider your interaction with Jesus at the gift shop. Give him whichever raffle tickets you want to give him to take your baggage back. Say thank you if, you leave, if you're leaving any of them with him and grab a bag and grab a scoop from the pick and mix of any of those other nine most amazing and beautiful and spirit-filled commodities that you would like as we leave the labyrinth. So just ponder that now and let these words wash over you. We're actually issued with a challenge from today's lectionary as we leave this labyrinth. And it's to think, and I'm sure we've all got our own thoughts about what the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 means. But here we are, we find ourselves in a very strange place in the world, and we find our church in a very strange position. But we've prayed this morning, as we go from here, to make something of the world and to share and show God's love in the world. So as you're choosing your items, to leave with. Listen to this short excerpt from this morning's lectionary. Jesus invited them all to sit down upon the ground, and they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, and he gave them to the disciples to set before the people, and he divided the two fish amongst them all. Then all the 5,000 people ate and were satisfied. Massive, massive thanks to you all for sharing in that journey this morning. Um, happy for any feedback or thoughts afterwards, if you want to share, and then please do send messages to that effect. Um, and there is, there is only one song that we can finish with. Um, it's become something of an anthem uh, on Methley worship occasions, but it was kind of written for what we've done today, because here we are, to, we're, we're, we are together, uh, we've shared together, we have gone on this journey together, and we're about to keep going on this journey together. So I'm going to break with tradition and sing it nice and gently. <laughs> so uh, please uh, join in. You should have the words. If you don't, just hum along and clap and join in the chorus because you don't need words for that. <clears throat> we are people on a journey moving forward every day With our friendship going closer through our work and through our play And we learn about each other and ourselves along the way God's people journey on Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's people journey on. Now we don't know every detail that the future has in store, but we're quite prepared to boldly go where no one went before. We know that God is there for us and who can ask for more? That's why we journey on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's people journey on. There are some who 
you travel gently. There are some who must compete, using bikes and cars and aeroplanes, while others use their feet. We'll all end up together when the journey is complete. God's people journey on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. God's people journey on. So we journey on together with our God who will not rest Till the sick are healed, the hungry fed, and all the poor are blessed As long as there is anyone exploited or oppressed The journey must go on Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah God's people journey If you'd like to unmute yourselves, please. Welcome back, all. Thank you for that this morning. Um, I'd like, we're going to join hands again across the miles. That was fun. Um, and share the grace together to close this morning. That will be wonderful. It's lovely to see us all holding hands. It's what a miracle. So let's share together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you all. We, uh, it's big worship next Sunday evening if you're around. Oh, I was trying hats on Jeanette. That's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Jeanette, you look like the executioner. We've, we've, played, we've, we've, been, we've had Peppa Pig out and all sorts. Well, <laughs> well, how perfect is that? Yes, I love it. <laughs> Thanks for your time, everyone. It's lovely Thank to you see Kevin. you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. And, yeah, we shall see you Thank soon. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks very Thank much indeed, all of you. Bye. Bye. Lots of love. Lots of love. Bye. 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 Take care. Yeah. Lots Bye. of love to you all. Bye. 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 Bye.